Good morning and welcome to another daily live webcast called GenCast, a live webcast that happens every Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern here on YFELive.com. Today's guest is Sierra Barter. She is the CEO and co-founder of the Lady Project or the PVD Lady Project. I'm really excited to talk to her about that, but we're also talking about headlines today. Specifically, three headlines. Of course, we are going to talk a little bit about the Obama um, State of the Union address last night. Uh, we're going to talk about the anthropology headlines and some um, and something that's going on with the Zappos right now. So make sure that you watch the entire 30 minutes and use the hashtag GenCast. I'm your host today, Jennifer Dono. You can tweet me using at Jennifer Dono. Uh, and like I said, my guest is Sierra Barter. It's Winning Wednesday, where we talk about things that are winning and I, gosh darn it, I don't have my winning queued up. Ugh. I need a better app for cues, guys. So if you know a good sound cue app for specifically the iPhone, that would be awesome. Let me know. So anyway, let's go ahead and welcome on our guest, Sierra. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. So Sierra, tell us a little bit more about, like I said, you're the CEO and co-founder of PVD Lady Project. Now, this is something I first heard of when we welcomed uh, Julie on to YFE Chat Live a little over a year ago. She was just getting this started and she mentioned you. So what is it and what is your role within, within PVD Lady Project? Yeah, so the Providence Lady Project, we connect, inspire, and showcase awesome women doing amazing things here in Providence through events, membership, and community engagement. So we have over 250 members here in Rhode Island, and Rhode Island only has a million people. We're, we're the smallest state. Wow. Uh, but we really want to get women together who are motivated and passionate and entrepreneurial or really, you know, kicking butt at their own you know, in their in own industry and get them in the same room and have them start talking and connecting and more importantly, you know, doing business together. Well, and since we last talked to Julie, I mean, it was just getting started in Rhode Island. And I, when she mentioned it, I was like, wow, that is an awesome opportunity because Rhode Island is such a tiny little state uh, that it makes sense to be able to gather all of the women together in that manner. But since then, you've gone into a number of cities and you still have big plans for expansion. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Definitely. We launched New Haven um, on October 23rd of this year, or excuse me, of last year. And it was really cool um, to see the Lady Project in a different environment. And then we launched Boston about two weeks ago, which I was really excited about because we, you know, New Haven and Providence are similar where they're university towns, are a little bit smaller. And Boston was like the next level. And it was really, really cool to be in there and see what an effect Lady Project already has in Boston and how many women came out to support our first event, which was over 115. And this is a nonprofit organization too. And like you were saying, you're applying for your 50. 5013C, uh, and so fingers are crossed that everything goes really well for that. But you also have memberships. So someone is an actual membership or member of your organization, right? Absolutely, yep. So we have five different levels of membership, and we actually launched an online membership this year, and that's for women who may not have a chapter near them um, and want to connect online because we meet in person, which is really important, but we also have an online aspect. So we have like closed Facebook groups, we have a LinkedIn profile, we're going to have members only access to the website, as well as member goodies that you can get, um, whether you're in Providence or in California. Um, and then we have a student membership for any student in the area because we think it's really important for students um, to connect with people in their college town to start building their networks early on. Then we also have separate memberships for individuals and businesses. So um, you can join as an individual or if you have a business, you get certain business perks and you can add in a co-founder or partner. And then we also have, uh, we launched this year a corporate membership and that's for more of our larger companies where it's a small sponsorship fee, but then they're also promoted at an event down the year, and you can have four members on there too. But there's tons of different really cool uh, member perks for every single level. Very nice. Yeah, I I love this idea, especially the student piece, like you said, to start your network early on, and your prices are so affordable. They're not like the $500, $600 packages that we see for a lot of other women's organizations that aren't necessarily nonprofits. So I'm excited to get into headlines with you specifically because you do have this role as CEO of PVD Lady Project. And so you, I feel like the first headline is going to be right up your alley. So it's all about Obama's State of the Union address. And this is actually coming from an article that is in Elle magazine. Um, I know, really uh, 
classy place that I, I took it from. <laughs> um, it's actually a really good article, though. It's kind of pokes fun a little bit at his um, a little outdated reference to Mad Men uh, and also pop culture reference to Mad Men, by the way, in the State of the Union address. But it talks about the discrepancy or the uh, the issue with 77 cents for every dollar a man earns peace with women's equality. So, Sierra, what was your take on, Did you first of all, uh, well, no, let's just get into it. What's your take on this? I mean, uh, first of all, um, gosh, I, I just said that. Um, let me regroup. My thoughts on this was it was a bit of a distraction. While I agree with everything he said, I thought, why are we talking about this right now? Um, what's your take? I, I, I feel like you'd be pretty passionate about this. Yeah, I think that it is kind of weird when there is a pop culture reference in this major moment in history for the year. But I also think it raises some really good points about equality in the workplace and especially how, you know, women are being paid 70 cents to the dollar, but it's actually even less for women of color, which um, is sometimes left out. And it's really important to acknowledge as well. But I, I do feel like it's important to bring up the fact that so many businesses need to make these changes to make the workplace more accessible for women, whether it's, you know, ability to work from home or if your child is sick or you take your dog to the vet, like you have these things during the day, you should be able to do them and, you know, make it up along the way. And I was actually in New York this weekend having a discussion with my friend about Lean In. We were talking about the workplace and about how you know, so many more women are coming into the workplace and it's all about paying them as much, but it's also these structures were built by men and for men. And a lot of these companies don't really even acknowledge those principles like, oh, I need to have a separate room if I'm nursing my child or I need to have, you know, different hours where, you know, men and women who may have children or have outside responsibilities need to have flexible work hours. So I do think it's an important um, topic to be raised, especially at this day of the unit, but I agree, it's kind of like the Mad Men reference, like things have certainly gotten better since the Joan Holloway days. Um, but I do think that it will take women to make those changes in the workplace to say, hey, we need to make sure that, you know, you can leave at five to make sure that you get home at the time you need to get to, or you need to make sure that you need maternity leave, and those things are so important, and paid paternity leave. And it's just going to take more women at the top and creating their own businesses and establishing those structures from the ground up to make those changes. See, I love that you brought that up because I think it's outside of government regulation. I think there's a lot of stuff that happens, and this might be an unpopular opinion on my part, but I feel like a lot of those issues are taken care of on by the businesses end and by women like Cheryl Sandberg and yourself that are standing up for other women and saying, hey, you guys, let's pay attention to this. Let's make the work environment a little bit better because in the, in the long run, that is really going to improve productivity on the employee's position to and improve our position as business owners as well when we're making our employees happy and able to leave at certain times if they have to go take care of a sick kid that's good one of the people i followed on twitter though that was commenting during the state of the union address was um i think her name is savvy auntie she's really big in the women's movement of the the childless woman so the the single adult female that has no kids and she calls you know it's kind of like the auntie um culture i guess where they love kids, they just don't want any to have any of their own. And she was pointing out that uh, just because I don't have kids does not mean that I'm not a woman. And I still have needs, too. And if I have to go home and take care of a sick parent, that's also a need that an employer needs to address. It's not just about being a mom and taking care of your kids. Uh, so that was something that I thought was interesting. But again, I feel like, personally, it all comes back to like you said, women standing up and making their voices heard. And a lot of the things uh, Sheryl Sandberg has suggested in the last year or so is the idea that we have to ask for more money. That's something I feel like the women's movement is still progressing. We're still evolving and there's still a lot to be done. And a lot of women still have the opportunity to stand up and be role models, to be leaders in this movement. And I just wanted to point out, Sierra, before we move on to the next headline, they... Elle Magazine, another reason why I chose this is because they included um, a, a GIF, GIF, how do you say that again? Of, <laughs> of um, uh, what's his face? <laughs> Vice President. Why am I blinking on like this, right? Yeah, like Biden. Uh, he <laughs> is making a little face. It's cute. 
I know everyone was commenting, and I think even in this article they commented that Biden was cute. <laughs> cute. <It's> like so, <laughs> when she meets him in the White House, and she's all flustered. I know. So. So, uh, Sierra, our next one, I, which you were excited about, was the Anthropology. Uh, it's an InStyle magazine. It's Anthropology Brings Bobble Bar to a Store Near You. And this is big news because Bobble Bar is a an online retailer where they sell their jewelry that is Bobble Bar brand, right? So they're, um, they're selling an online retail, and it's not in person. But now you're able to go to Anthropology and pick up a special collection of of Bobble Bar there alongside Anthropology. So why are you excited about this? I love Bobble Bar. <laughs> I picked up a few gifts for Christmas this year from the website. I love like big statement necklaces. So um, I think it's really cool to see kind of that online retailer move into a brick and mortar space and especially with a, a brand so established and so niche as Anthro. And I love Anthro. I love it more what's on sale. But, um, you know, it's a really cool collaboration and it's always interesting to see brands that mesh really well together. And and something you probably wouldn't expect, like I probably wouldn't have expected Bobble Bar to pair up with Anthro. Um, but I think it's really cool. I know, it's, it's because they're uh, very niche, um, like boutique brands. And that is something that I always get excited about collaborations, like I was telling you before the show. And this one is just interesting because I feel like the brands really fit well together at the same time as being very different. Anthropology, I feel like, is a little bit more like earthy, just a different kind of marketplace than Bubble Bar, I feel like, would attract. They're much more shiny, black and white, mm -hmm. spiffy type of a thing. But at the same time, because they are after that niche boutique audience, it just is exciting to see that type of collaboration happen. And it makes me think, you know, who should we be collaborating with as business owners? Who should we be going towards? And how do those deals happen? Mm -hmm. That's what I want to know. Like, who had to contact you? Who had to negotiate what? Because I feel like this is a big opportunity for Bobble Bar to be actually in a store to reach someone else that's not going to go online and order it. But at the same time, it's also a good opportunity for anthropology. So who had the winning hand in this? What did that look like? It bugs me. Yeah, it's interesting to see, like, did someone from Anthro, like, tweet Bobble Bar or something? But, um... Yeah, I think it's really cool, and I think Bubble Bar is probably getting the better deal out of it because I feel like Anthro is successful in many of the things they do, and they always have the most beautiful pieces, and we actually did an event there last year, and they were so welcoming and so cool, and they did a fashion show for us. Um, and I think for an online retailer, being able to be in a storefront that is so popular, that has such a great online presence, that has a catalog, that has these beautiful displays is going to be really beneficial for them. So. Yeah, the displays. I I didn't think of that. It's all about, you know, going in and seeing and being able to touch and feel and how it's mm -hmm. presented. I didn't even think about the fact that they're taking that, you know, two-dimensional experience into that 3D type of a, a deal. And I wanted to bring up before we move on, Alyssa Morrissey, she's saying that her husband gets no time off after the baby comes, so she's pregnant and mm -hmm. she's going to be having a baby. Uh, yet, you know, fee women do. And uh, companies like Microsoft, though, have elected to do that. And it makes something, it makes it attractive for the employee to go there because they, they know they have additional benefits like that. Um, and then also when her, her kids are sick, it's her taking care of it. And the man has to, you know, continue going to work because it's not... Um, it's not accepted for the man to be given those types of uh, responsibilities. So I think that's an interesting point that you bring up to the discrepancy in, um, in, in men and women's roles in the house and how the employer sees that. Yeah, and it should be, you know, you get X number of kids sick days or, you know, I think paternity leave is so important. And I, I mean, I don't have children, but I couldn't imagine like having a newborn and not having my husband or my partner have the same time off to help me and help the baby. So. We'll see, and I'm a, I'm a, you know, as as a young female entrepreneur, and I'm going on maternity leave. It's all up to me to plan for that, right? Mm -hmm. So I have to financially be ready. I have to have all of my team ready to go to handle customer support, to handle the actual services. And uh, my husband, on the flip side, is employed, and he has to take time off. I'm making him allocate some of his vacation time 
to to that. They didn't give him like paid maternity leave. So I feel like a lot of women are leaving the workplace because of those inequalities and they're creating something for themselves. And like you said, we need to keep these women in the corporations so that they can reach, you know, they can go up into C-level positions and have that type of opinion, have that sway in there where I feel like a lot of women, when they get to the maternity, maternity leave point, they don't come back because they see those inequalities and they don't stay to fight for what should be happening there. Anyway, I don't want to get too far off on a tangent. Going into our, our last headline, Zappos and the search for a better way to run a business. Now, this is, again, talking about the same type of a theme uh, where business owners, you know, we should have more, in my opinion, we should have more control over what happens within our business to attract good employees, to attract better customers, to be more productive, and to make money. And I, of course, know that doesn't happen in reality with every company. There's always those bad people out there that take advantage of people. But Zappos is uh, is starting a a new trend, I guess, which they mentioned in this article uh, was used to be referred to as TQM in the 1990s, which was um, called Total Quality Management. Zappos is now calling it Holacracy. And so basically, uh, Sierra, what I got from Holacracy in this article was that Zappos is instead of having the the traditional hierarchy they now have these circles that they they refer to in the article where the leaders they're still leaders but they offer inspiration they inspire their employees versus micromanage them so employees take ownership over projects over tasks and they start things from things start from the employees from the bottom up and then the the manager is just there basically like i said again to inspire is that what you got from it That's what I got to, and I think it really creates a sense of accountability from everyone. You know, as a leader, as the boss, you are accountable to make sure that the people you're working with have the resources and have the tools they need to do the job, but you're also letting them do it um, in their own way. And then that employee, who's maybe a little bit lower, is accountable for the task that they're providing. And I think that's really important. Well, and it's hard, looking at this from a business owner's perspective, it's very hard for us to give up any type of control or any type of creative. I just watched a documentary on Chipotle last night that's on Netflix, and uh, they talked about the CEO, the co-CEO, the founder. He still has his hands in everything. He still has say over the ingredients, the way they make things. They He goes into the actual stores, and so I feel like that's an interesting contrast into, into Zappos. Um, and what is more productive, what makes the employees happier. It'll be interesting to see what happens with Zappos because I feel like looking from the outside in that this is something they've been doing for some time now yeah it looks really cool yeah so Sierra we've ran out of time so I want to make sure that we mention one more time um the PVD lady project where everyone can find out more where they can become members and you also have a big event coming up too yeah, we have the Lady Project Summit on April 12th here in Providence, and we have some amazing speakers from Amy Polar Smart Girls, the College Prepster, people from Bus Magazine are, are going to be there. It's going to be a really oh, awesome wow. day of speakers and workshops, and we're going to have a really fun after party, too. So Ooh, you don't- after parties are always fun. <laughs> it's fun. We have a awesome. wine sponsor, so it's going to be good. <laughs> Ooh, a wine sponsor. There you go automatic Mm -hmm. attendance then (laughs) so Sierra thank you so much for joining me I'm excited to find out more about PVD Lady Project and all that you're doing and thank you so much for contributing your opinion in today's headlines winning Wednesday headlines read absolutely thank you so much for having me all right everyone so you've just been watching the daily live webcast called GenCast here Monday through Friday 10 a.m pacific 1 p.m eastern on yfelive.com if you're not watching live hopefully you'll join us one day and participate in the chat it's always fun to see what you guys have to say about what we are talking about live on video make sure that you sign up for more updates from yfe at yfe.me forward slash mail that we have the daily action calendar coming out we have yfe chat lives happening on thursdays at 6 p.m pacific 9 eastern and all sorts of fun stuff so again thank you so much for watching this has been jennifer dono hope to see you back here tomorrow where we're talking about healthy snacks with at by Sarah Ray. She's one of my favorite food bloggers and she also is the founder of Frederick Food Tour. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. See you tomorrow.